Hello and welcome to a new Mod Showcase episode for Kerbal Space Program. This time we present a purely aesthetic modification. It's called Procedural Fairings and it adds protective cargo panels for rockets. If you, like us, kinda cringe at the always exposed visible cargo at the top of KSP rockets, stay tuned. Once the mod procedural fairings is installed, the new parts will be available in the construction hangars. They are listed in the Aerodynamics tab. There are two types of protective panels. For cargo placed at the end of the rocket, protective panels conclude the rocket at the top. For cargo placed inside a rocket, inline fairings provide protective side panels to keep a smooth rocket shape. Here is how one does install a fairing at the top of the rocket. You take a base part and place it like a regular part at the upper end of the rocket before you add any cargo. Or you place the base part at the lower end of the cargo and then add the rocket. An important note at this point, do not forget to put a separator between the base and the cargo. Otherwise they cannot be separated as there is no separating element integrated in the base part. The base parts come in a flat and in a raised variant. Once they are installed you can click on them with the right mouse button and choose from the following options. Size defines the base diameter to fit the module to the rocket. The arrow buttons allow for precise manipulation of the values. Extra radius defines the shape of the casing. One can change the curvature of the fairings to precisely fit the cargo. Auto struts refers to the additional invisible reinforcements of the casing, not the cargo itself. The cargo has to be strutted separately. Toggle crossfeed can turn fuel flow between cargo and base on or off. This can be used to keep the rocket from using fuel from the cargo. In this example the rocket uses up fuel from the lower tank. Once it's used up, the engine turns off. If we activate crossfeed, the engine turns back on because it can now access the fuel in the upper fuel tank. More nodes and fewer nodes can specify the number of single fairing elements. This value must be set on the base before adding any panels. Once the desired shape is defined, using the blue lines as reference, one can put the fairings on the appropriate nodes. As a last step, we use the right mouse button to click on the fairing and manipulate ejection power and ejection torque, which define the force applied on part separation. In order to place an inline fairing, we use the interstage fairing adapter, just like an ordinary part, and put it where we want to later place the cargo. Once you place the module, 
blue guiding lines appear symbolizing the walls. Notice that the cargo is placed on the base module. Do not forget to use a separator part to get the cargo out of the rocket later on. The next module can be placed at the top end of the blue guiding lines to complete the inline element. Clicking on the base with the right mouse button opens up additional settings. Extra height extends the covers beyond the upper limit of the node. This can be done for aesthetic reasons or because the rocket design requires it. Top defines the radius at the upper end of the inline element. It is the opposite to the base, thus enabling accurate matching of the shape of the rocket. You can also use this functionality to create transitions between different rocket size modules. Height refers to the length of the inline element and enables precise adjustment to the cargo and any clearance space needed to get the cargo out of the rocket. Once the height and the shape of the inline element are defined, we can click on the fairing with the right mouse button to set ejection force values. Let's have a look at two examples on how these fairings look and work in-game. We start with a classic cargo fairing at the top of the rocket. In the standard game the panels only serve an aesthetic purpose. The rockets look like we know them from real life rockets. If we however install modifications that change the atmosphere to behave in a more realistic way, the fairings also have a aerodynamic purpose, they reduce drag during ascent and help not only to save fuel but also prevent damage to the cargo from aerodynamic pressure. As soon as we reach a desired height we can drop the panels. Depending on how we configure the ejection forces, this happens slowly or with more force behind it. The second example represents an Apollo-style mission. A moon lander is attached below the space capsule 
during the launch sequence it is protected with a fairing from aerodynamic pressure. Once the upper stage reaches all, we blow the panels off and the landing module is revealed. Then we separate from the upper stage and continue our journey.